Right, today I'm going to be filming the Himley Colliery Pits, two of them. The Himley Colliery started off quite slowly and then grew to encompass most of the pits in the area. Um, older pits such as Toldhouse Pit and Corbin's Colliery, they got took over by the Himley Colliery. We're at pit number 11 and pit number 12. I'm going to be looking at pit number 11 more so. Pit number 12 is the one where the chimney stack is still in situ. I will show you a picture of that now. And also you can see it on the map. But the one I'm going to be looking at mostly today is pit number 11, which was built around and kind of forgotten. And looking on the LiDAR, I can still see there are remains. So I'm hoping to get up by there today. Uh, I'm standing now at the Huntsmill farm. Huntsmill's gone now, but it, I think it was medieval. So I'm hoping to find some interesting bits. Right, before I start, I'm on the way still. Um, just here on the map, you can see, marked well. And this well served the Huntsmill. Now this bank here, what I'm at now, is the bank that made up the Huntsmill bank that, that basically held the water back for the mill itself. So it would have been full of water. Whether it's under shot, over shot or middle shot, which means where the water hits the blades of the mill, I'm not sure. Now it's just obviously running underneath. They've covered the river and they've made it underneath. But there you can still see the river or the stream running quite nice. So that water would have once turned the mill to grind the corn in the area. And now the bank is still here, but um, a lot of it's missing. And where the well is, it was here. Ah, there, okay. Put one back down. Okay, so you can see the round edge here and the stones there from it, they're sandstone. And I mean, look at that for a brick. That there is solid sandstone. Yep, you can still see the chip marks from the man who was a mason. You're gonna believe this. I jumped down that little hill then and a really old badger running off there, see him just in the distance then? Ha. He's looking at me now. Oh, I would have scared the poor chap. I bet he's not seen people over here 40, 50 years in this section. You've got the factory there, you've got houses there and the only paths in the area uh, badger paths obviously now. I thought they were foxes but Right, I'm being very careful now. This is where it is on the map. You can see at some point they've put a fence up. Probably because it's dangerous to be here. Somewhere there, there's a hole in the ground. Um, the fencing's gone now. So yeah, luckily there's a tree here that will put some support to the hole. So if I do fall, at least I can grab a root on the way down. Oh, yeah. Be very careful. I will detect this spot and just see if we're on the money. Pretty gutted there's no remains, but I will pop up to pit 12 in a minute and give you a good show of that. We've got a signal. Okay, so basically, I thought it was a button, but uh, it's not a button. I can tell you what that is. What it's doing here, I don't know. But that is a Victorian skirt lead, uh, lead weight. So basically, the women were so modest in Victorian times, and the skirts were long, so they put these weights and sew them into the hem so that it keep the weight, of, to keep the skirt down. Very modest, you know. Today girls wear skirts that are quite light and flighty. 
I couldn't imagine a girl putting a weight on a skirt. But yeah, interesting. So that was sewn into a woman's skirt. Why on earth it's doing, I don't know. She might have passed by. It might be in the landfill that's been dumped here. Either way, it's ended up on here. And it's actually got a little initial cut into it. So the woman who owned it, if she was at the gala or at the races and this fell, they would probably go to the steward and say, has anybody handed in any lead weights? Because I'm sure they weren't cheap. You know? And they would have been falling off all the time, being caught by the feet, being dragged across the floor. So that it's a quite a common find, but uh, never by an old mine. Right, uh, I'm still at pit number 11. I think I found the remains. There's uh, bricks all strewn over the floor here, but it's badly overgrown. There's a tree that's died and fell on top of it. So the chances of metal detection here are quite slim. So I'm gonna have to call it a dead loss. And um, at least I found the weight. I'll have one little ferret around, see if I can find anything interesting. If I do, I'll report it. And if not, I'll move on to pit 12 and see if we call salvage of the day. Right, I'm glad I had a little look around because right on the surface, believe it or not, I found that. Now, it looks like a George. I thought it was a cartwheel penny, but the cartwheels have got quite bigger. But that, if that's a George, you're talking late 1700s, late 19th century, late 18th century even. Very early coin. I think it's a George. Right, I'm going to do the unthinkable now. Rub it on my jeans, sorry. Any coin collector will tell you not to do that. Yep, that's a George. You can just see his big snout. Yep, you can clearly see his uh, outline there. I think um, you can often tell the differences because retrospectively one of king faces one way or queen and then the next one in line to the throne will face the other way so he's facing to the right so that will probably make him george the fourth so 1799 1798 and on the back obviously you have should be good old britannia Badly worn, badly worn. It's obviously been sitting on the surface a long time, degrading. But absolutely chuffed with that. It's my first George Penny for a long time. And the fact that I found it in this old slag heap, you know, by an old mine, it just shows that this history is out there, waiting to be discovered. So get your shovel, get your metal detector, and get out there amongst it, and get it on film. Right, there we go. I'm getting closer. So that is the stack pit 12 it's still with us and the reason I hope we're gonna find stuff here today is because I know that men and women came to work on this site every day for many years year in year out day in day out and countless times they would have been not in the mood for it you know and when you're in that frame of mind you often lose things as we know so I'm hoping today we're going to find something that connects us to that past, to that heritage, that industrial heritage that's not been recognised as much as it should. You know, a lot of it's getting knocked down or, or built over or sterilised. Some of it for no reason, such as the Hill Hunts Mill. Why they knocked that down, I'll never know, because they've done nothing with the land. Okay, so we're here. There is the chimney and here is the pit head so actually I don't think this is the pit head the way that's built there it looks to be an air shaft so the cover would be put on to stop rain getting in but you can see inside there if we could get a camera I want to get one of them plumbing cameras and uh, have a look down there at some point yeah so where the pit head is, I don't know. And, but we'll have a walk around quickly before I start detecting. See what we can't see. Okay, a lot of graffiti straight away. Obviously the kids are making good use of it. Disgusting. Oh, it's quite colourful actually. It just don't really suit this place at all, does he? What they're doing there, they're practising for the uh, Ninja Warrior UK. Right. At least they're not vandalising it and destroying it, because that would be a shame. 
Okay, you see some old bricks there, the really thin ones at the bottom. And it's a totally different colour brick. So I'm guessing this is either later, the way it's butting up to the chimney, it's later. Or they've cut into that to build the chimney. You can see the thinner bricks in there, there might be earlier bricks. Um, it's quite a beast actually, quite well built. We used to build things well back then. Right, let's, oh look at that, look at that. Nice bit of brick in there, putting up to the edge. Looks like they've used older bricks to make this, so at some point they've found some old bricks and they've just thought, right, we'll do something decorative with them. Let's see if there's any fingerprints in them. Yep, straight away. See that there? Must be a thumbprint. Put that back. But yeah, you often find thumbprints in old bricks. It's from the children and the women and the men that made them. You know, when they were wet, they'd obviously stack them, ready to be going in the kiln. And they'd have fingerprints. I found many like that. Amazing. Okay, I'm going to detect this area. It's going to be absolutely sodden with junk. Obviously, look at the state of it. But I'm hoping that we'll find something, at least, that relates to the history of the area and the mine itself. Still nice to see it. Um, this would have been the engine house, I think. You know, all these holes and cracks, and there's some sort of support there. What that was there for, I don't know. Maybe supporting some sort of steel structure there, like a little hole there. Look at that little window. Maybe covered at one point. Wow. Right. What we got here? Wow. Look at that. Huh. Okay. So I'm guessing there was a fire in there. Was there? What would that be then? I'll have to look into that. Why is there a dirt floor to it? Was that the chimney? Was this where the fire was? Or was that something else? Was that drawing air from the... Uh... I should know that, shouldn't I? But I'm guessing somebody will tell me. So please, if you do now, comment. Right, that's interesting. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure somebody could help me. That looks like a miner's token. I've been finding a lot of rubbish, obviously. Coke cans, bottles, a few old bits, but nothing special. But that, wow. If that is what I think it is, basically the miners, before they went down the pit, they would be given a token. So that if the worst happened and there was a pitfall, a damp explosion, you know, an influx of water, then they'd know who was down the pit and who wasn't. So if this number was signed to me, I would then be given this token. Um, I would go down the pit and do my day's work. If there was an accident, the people at the top of the pit head would say, right, there's been a fall, so-and-so, so-and-so still down there. Jamie's one of them because his number's missing. You could be signed out different numbers, I believe. I don't know if each number was signed to each worker. And this number actually related to a certain person or if it was just a daily experience. 
I, I think maybe it was relating to that's why there's 102 because not all the same people would be working on the same day so everybody would have a number and if somebody left and somebody started number one would go and that would never be anything again but number 102 would come in you know and then that would say that was signed to me Jamie Bedard and then when I start working there that number would disappear until it got to 200 and then maybe they'd start afresh so yeah that could relate to a certain person who got a damn good telling off for losing his uh, token number 102 so yeah here we are Himley Colliery pick number 12 and we found somebody's token somebody's mine token absolutely stunning right let's carry on um, again the lights failing me but I'm hoping I can get a few more finds before the day ends Okay, that I believe is a wind up key for a, a clock, a grandfather clock. What on earth it's doing here, I don't know. Maybe the, the headmaster of the house or the head of the house kept this on his keychain, you know. He was the man that wind the clock. I mean, back in Anglo-Saxon times, it was a woman, and in Roman times, that held the keys to the house, and that was seen as quite an honour. So they would have the keys to the house as well as the key to the clock for winding. But in Victorian times, it, it became more centred around the man. And uh, even though the woman kept the house, she was given no respect for it. And obviously the grandfather clock was seen as a respectable thing, so the man had the key. And obviously that dim-witted man came to work with it on his keychain. It snapped off. The other part of it is uh, like an egg-shaped thick piece of brass or bronze with two holes and it would literally, you would turn whatever many times and that would be the day, a daily routine. Come back to the bank where the hunts mill, I'm on the way home now and I was fettling around by the old well and that popped up. Just with my eyes I spotted that and that is a 19th century early 19th century 1800s late 17th century well sorry late 18th century clay pipe so the smaller the bowl the older it is generally the rule you know because tobacco was expensive back in the day so as time went on um, you'd get bigger and bigger bowls and often the size of the bowl would denote wealth so the bigger the pipe the bigger the man <laughs> nothing changes does it but um yeah that's a nice find, I'm chuffed with that. What I'm going to do is, when I reach 50 subscribers, I'm going to give away, randomly to one of the subscribers, a few choice items that I've found on my journeys. So there'll be some metal detecting finds, and I'll give this clay pipe as well. So yeah, so get subscribing, get liking, get commenting, and uh, yeah, I'll give some nice things away to one of the guys. Thanks for watching, and um, I hope we have more luck on the next one. It's been fun, I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.